Hey everyone, this is a quick video just meant as a uh, tutorial to, on how booting um, most game ROMs for PC98 on an emulator. The target audience is for people who are just starting, so don't expect anything advanced here. It's just the very, very basics. And I won't go too deep into the emulator part of it. Just how do, we, how do you get started? So the first thing that you need is a user-friendly uh, emulator for which I will recommend Nickel Project uh, 2 which uh, has a couple of versions. The FM Gen is the one that I will be suggesting here. Uh, so all you have to do is punch in this address in your browser. You can find all links in the comment section of this, uh, in the description of this video. It'll bring you to this page here, which is a very simple uh, Japanese page. Uh, just scroll down to PC98 or click on the PC98 link at the top of the page. Uh, here there's a couple of downloads. You can just get the first one. Just left click on it and you it's a direct link it'll just download this one file and that's all you need it will result in you getting this file here usually it'll be in your download folder but I just move it for convenience sake in my case so this is a 7z compressed file so in case you don't have it you'll need to have the 7z uh, our archiver uh, software so just uh, go to 7-zip.org and you get the version that you need depending on your OS usually you just go in the first link here you download and install now it'll give you going back to this folder if you right click on it you'll have a 7-zip option and here you can just extract to its own folder which will give you this um, folder right here but there's a couple of version of the emulator the one that is most compatible with most software is NP 21nt.exe. If you ever get into a situation where you're using an older ROM and you're having weird image glitches and duplicate and split images, you can try with the uh, NP2NT uh, emulator instead. So we'll just boot this here so that we have it ready on the side. We can go uh, in emulate, configure, we'll just change the speed for the sake of this video. Some games works better if you have a faster CPU, some with a lower CPU, so just experiment with that. But we'll cover this more thoroughly uh, in a later video uh, specific to the Nickel Project 21 software. So we'll just reboot here. And then I will scroll down to reduce the volume. Now you gotta keep in mind, uh, this emulator emulates a PC, not a console. So usually when you have uh, ROMs for any console is just the game file itself and then you boot it in the emulator it boots the game and it's fine but this is a PC so just like any other PC game you need to first start your your machine your your, your computer to an OS either it's DOS or Windows or anything that that you want any custom OS will do the job as well so that means that when you get ROMs for PC 98 or PC 98 uh, 100 series you won't get an exact copy of the disc in most cases. You will need to have a copy which has been edited to include uh, a loader, some, some version of DOS in most cases. Um, and we'll take a quick look at that here. Now the PC9800 series usually had two floppy drives and at least one hard drive. Um, and the, most of the ROMs that you'll find depending on the format and depending on who made it will come in either a bunch of discs, one discs, or one hard drive. So we'll take a look at the two most common configuration. The first one being disks. So here we'll take a look at EA's 40 boxing on floppy disks. I call them floppy, but it, it wasn't the floppy ones, it was the smaller, harder ones. But anyway, uh, so going to the emulator, we'll be using these three menus here. So that's floppy disk drive one, floppy disk drive two, and hard drive. And here we have three IDE hard drives. We'll be focusing on the first one for now. Um, now the disc will come in different configuration depending on the game itself and who actually dumped the ROM and prepared it so it's in a bootable state. So we'll take a look at a couple of, of different scenarios here. So I'll be opening my, uh, my floppy disk. Let's go to our folder here. We'll start with the user disk. Just to show uh, one of the problem scenarios that you might encounter uh, while booting stuff. So no system files. As I said, disks as standalone uh, do not usually contain a, a, a bootloader. When you just buy disks at the store, it doesn't have it. You need to first go in DOS and navigate to that. Now the user disk um, in most games will be used to either save uh, data 
or to save any kind of, of configuration like custom racetracks or characters and stuff like that. So it makes sense that it, it doesn't boot on its own. While we're on topic of uh, user disk, let's open disk B. So disk B here, as you can see, it, it loaded MegDOS. That's the bootloader it used to actually get in the game. So here, uh, please insert disk uh, to be formatted in drive B. This is the user disk maker. Uh, so I would be using that in order to create my own custom disk. Usually if I buy some a game at the store, I don't want to write anything on the disk. I want to keep it in the same condition as it was the way I booted, the, the way I bought it, so that if I format my, my computer, I can uh, you know, install the game again. So that's why I'll be using a, a user disk here. But anyway, let's move on. Now let's go to disk A, reset, and here is usually what you'll see when you'll boot most of your game. First you have your, your DOS loader, and then it'll automatically go in the game. That's because someone took the time to create the necessary files and auto-executable so that it just boots the game. Uh, so there we go. And now we have our game here, Electronics Art presents 40 Boxing. So there we go. Uh, keep in mind some games will require you to have disk A in drive 1 and disk B in drive 2 for example. Uh, drive 1 is sometimes used as the system disk, it will never change and then as you go through the game you have to switch games in your second slot. When that happens you just keep the first slot, the, the, the first uh, floppy disk drive full, then you go and open the second one for example. Here you can see at the top that now I have two things loaded up. So that was the most complicated part. The rest is easy, uh, and the rest being hard drives. Now hard drives are usually configured in a way that it just boots straight up to the game. And that's usually, if you have the choice between a hard drive and a uh, floppy disk, just go to hard drive. It'll remove any swapping of the disk that you can, uh, that you could have to do, which is a source of problems, and sometimes you'll, you'll overwrite some of your disk and you don't want that, so just use a, a hard drive. Uh, now let's reset. Keep in mind the usual boot order is to go to the... Uh, actually, I forget. Let's see. So I have 40 boxing in my floppy disk. And see, it went to the floppy disk drive. So it's, it's more like a, a normal IBM 386 or 4086 uh, computer with the usual boot flow. So let's eject those. And now it should boot straight to the hard drive. And there we go, that's red, which was on our hard drive. And that's all there is to it. From here, you should be able to boot games um, and, and, and get started. The last thing I'll mention is keep in mind that the hard drives one and two are made to open the normal hard drive images. So you'll have the NX, uh, T98 uh, emulator format. So that's one reason why I like the NP uh, project. It takes a couple of formats when it comes to boot. So most of these will come, most of the, the, the games that you'll find will come in those formats and you won't have any problems booting it. IDE2 is made for disks, so you'll have your Qs, your CCD, your ISOs, the usual uh, disk image that we've been seeing throughout the 90s and, and well, for the last 25 years. Um, so if you have games which come on disk, this is what you'll boot it with. That being said, you'll need a boot disk. Uh, but that's a bit more complicated. I suggest that you try to avoid that uh, until you're a bit more familiar with all of the functions of the emulator itself. So that being said, um, thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or anything that you want to be covered in future tutorials, please let me know in the comments or get in touch through uh, Discord. And the next video will probably be uh, centered around Nickel Project 21 specifically with all of the different options that, uh, that will make uh, your experience better for this. Alright, so thank you. Have a nice one. See you next time.